Hey guys, Billy from Night Designs here. Today we're going to do a video on the Season 1 2 Gull Wing. So I don't have a cameraman, so I'm going to have to improvise. So let me step around here. You're not going to be seeing me much in this video. I'm just going to zoom in on the on the gull wing itself and we will go from there. All right. So first thing, this gull wing is constructed out of fiberglass. Uh, let me get my zooming here just right. And it can be ordered several different ways, but if you want an illuminated button in it, the wheel needs to stay hollow through the body. The grips can be poured solid, but the body's got to be hollow to run the wires. Or if you get it without the illuminated button, you just want the plastic uh, night head uh, overlay dropped in, then you can do the whole thing solid. This wheel's solid. Uh, my wheel is just, just a fuzz over nine pounds solid. Um, hollow, probably closer to around five, six pounds. So it's a, it's a good heavy wheel, strong, sturdy. When you hold it, you know, you can pretty much throw it across the yard and it's not going to go into pieces. Um, I'm going to be sending a lot more of my parts out in gray primer with a black guide coat, just like you see here. This is what pretty much any body shop does. They'll, they'll prime in gray and guide coat in black so that when you start blocking, you can find imperfections and you can assure that the surface is smooth. If when I'm priming in black, you can guide coat in white, but it's just not, you know, most people just don't do it that way. So um, just because of my background in, in body work and uh, doing paint and painter's helper, I prefer to prime in gray. So I'm just kind of going to go in this direction. So let's, let me just give you a little, kind of show you what goes on with blocking, because I know some of you guys may not know. Uh, let me show you. When you get this wheel, the best thing you can do is get you a rubber soft block. 3M makes these. You can give it any body store, uh, any supply store. Now about this, this wheel, I have done all the prep work. So you are at the stage that's called ready for paint. So it is in primer, in guide coat. All you have to do is water sand or dry sand this wheel with any grit above 500. I use 500 to get ready for paint. Some people prefer six, seven, eight, even a thousand. That's totally up to you. Um, and if you use water, be sure that all the electronics are dried off before you go put power to this thing. It's, it's a good idea to just dry sand the gull wing. You can water sand everything else. But as long as you're not going to hook any power to it before you get the water out, you're okay. So to block, Blocking is one of these things that you can be shown how to do it 50 times, but it doesn't mean you're just going to pick it up when someone tells you. You just got to kind of master it and figure out how it works. But I'll just give you a little rough, a rough detail on blocking. So blocking is in a in the shape of an X. So you go like you're making one leg of an X, and then you go like you're making the other leg of the X. Okay? So if you've got an imperfection, say we had an imperfection right here, you want to concentrate the center of that X shape on that imperfection, going this way and then that way, okay? And you need to keep the block flat. If you pick it up on its edge, or if you rub in the same spot like this, you're going to dig, and you're going to get in. Uh, it's, it's not going to be flat, it's not going to be level across, and you're not going to take all the waves out. All right. So that's how you block. I can only tell you so much. You'll just have to. You'll just have to master that. So, but when you're blocking, you'll see the gray. Oh, my adapter. Let me just set this adapter here. You'll see the gray, uh, the black starts to disappear, and the gray starts coming through. If you get this whole thing smooth, and it's all gray except one little spot that's black, that tells you got a low spot. You need to keep blocking. You keep blocking until all the black is gone. All right, all my parts are are zeroed in very, very, very close to. You you shouldn't have to reprime my parts, okay? Um, they, they, they've got several coats of high build primer on them, so when you block this the first time, you should be ready for paint right then. I, you know, I'm not going to swear. That I can't, I'm human. I'll miss something. You know, I could miss something, but not likely. Um, let's move on to some other parts of this gull wing. This, the way I do my gull wings, everybody's got their own way. And these videos are kind of a double negative because they inform you about what I do 
and why I do it. But on the, on the downside of that, people who see this, that makes it easier for them to copy what I do. And if they do, you know, I can't help that. But I want you guys to see what I do and understand what I do. You know, how I do it and why I do it. Um, everybody has their own things they want to do. I've learned you can't fiberglass metal to fiberglass. It don't stick. It's not going to, they don't work together like that. You can fiberglass to fiberglass and you can weld metal to metal, but you can't bond fiberglass to metal with fiberglass. So what I do is, this is a steel, let me get it in the frame here. This is a steel shaft with a plate on the back and there's a plate mounted inside, just, uh, just inside the gull wing, the fiberglass of the gull wing and it's bolted to the fiberglass body of the gull wing. So the body is probably about uh, around 3 8 of an inch thick on the back side here for strength. So I'll drill holes and bolt the steel assembly onto the fiberglass body. The, the, the nuts are nylon head nuts hidden on the inside. So that stuff never comes undone and it can't be separated because it's bolted together. But if it were just fiberglass in place, and you try to you try to turn this gull wing, that assembly is going to fly right off of it because it doesn't have it can't you can't fiberglass the metal. Um, so let me get let me get an, a, a, an assembly and I'll show you what it looks like. Like I say, sorry again, I don't have a a cameraman. Um, this is the assembly I use. I have these put together. They are very solid steel case hardened steel very durable not going anywhere so I'm gonna move in close and I'm gonna show you some other stuff about this gull wing alright you'll notice on the horn button most people will use a Suzo hat button which has a dome top on it and they will take and put some kind either a vinyl or a plastic logo and stick it to the dome top Suzo hat button well when you try to put a plastic night head on the top of a dome top cap it doesn't work real well so I custom build my buttons you'll notice this button is a flat acrylic it's flat across the top and the night head is in the back side on the inside of the switch so you can bypass all the dome top and sticking stuff to the front. Everything, you know, everything's in the back. And these buttons press real easy. They're controlled with a wireless uh, transmitter. You've only got one power wire coming in to the gull wing, so you can't operate uh, a, a, an illuminated button and a horn at the same time. Okay. So let me let me zoom out a little bit here. So to make this work you have to use, you power up the light with the power wire and you power up the wireless transmitter with the power wire, okay? So all this stuff is located on the inside. You'll notice on these gull wings, they don't have a big hole in the bottom or no big holes in the front. Your access point to, to mount it is right here in this little hole. You use a, ah oh crap, I ain't got it in the, hang on a second here. Sorry about that. Okay, you'll notice this hole this is, where, this is your mounting hole, and this is hidden by the switch pods, okay? So when you turn the wheel, you don't see this hole because the pods have it covered up. So there's no visible holes in my gull wing, all right? And what, what you do is you use a 13 16 gear wrench, and this wheel goes on in about five seconds. Um, and, and same thing, 13 16 gear wrench comes off in about five seconds. Real easy to put on and off the car. You can use a standard wrench. It's just a little more of a pain in the neck because obviously you have to hook it, turn, unhook, rehook, turn, and so forth, so on and so forth. So let's talk about, you know, let's, let me show you the trap door I've created. Um, a lot of, you probably, you, yeah, you can see it in the camera. It's hard to see. You can see a little seam line there. But what I've done here is just so that it looks nice, I didn't want to have to screw on a door. I wanted to bypass using screw. I, I'm not a... I don't like screw heads. That's you know for me that's just tacky. I wouldn't want it on my car. So, and I'm not criticizing whatever anybody else does. Don't get me wrong. So what I've done is I've made a trap door out of magnets. All right. So this door completely removes. What you do 
You just put your finger here. I don't know if you... Let me just come up close to you. All right. You can see this little notch here. What you do is you press where this little notch is. Okay? And that opens your door. And you can just pinch it and pull it away. And now you can get to all your, all your electronics on the inside. While I've got this in my hand, let me show you what I've got in here. So... This is your button and your hookups for your button. You only have uh, two grounds, two posies. You've got a 10 amp ATM blade fuse so that if anything ever shorts you can come right in here and pull this pull this fuse and put you another one in. Everything's fuse protected. And way down deep inside you can see the wireless transmitter mounted up inside there. All this stuff can be removed in case something was shorted for, for you know, for heaven forbid if something messes up, there's my cat. If something messes up, it can all be taken out and changed out. So this, you know, this is velcroed in. It'll just pull right out. So, but you shouldn't have any problem with this ATM blade fuse in here. You shouldn't have any troubles. That's what it's for, is to protect everything. And so once again, to put this plate back on, got the seal of approval in there. You just you line up the little circular front, just like this, and just drop it right in place. You may have to move it just a little bit, just like that. And now you're nice and flush on the back side. It's, it's uh, extremely hard to see, especially once you paint it in black. You can't see this seam line. And like I say, it comes off very easy. Just push, pull away, and you're ready to go. No screws, uh, nothing ugly. Very inconspicuous. So, now then, let me talk about the Grand Adapter. If you buy this Gullwing from me, I include this adapter. You don't have to go scurrying around town looking for one at the parts store. It comes with the wheel. It's included in the price, okay? So the way I've done this is I have put steel studs. Well, let me get in the frame here. Crap, sorry. I've put steel studs inside this Grand Adapter, all right? So all you have to do is you put this Grand Adapter on your Gullwing, It'll come on the gold wing when you order it. I'll have it taped on it so you really don't even have to take it off. So you get this gold wing lined up as best you can to go onto the car, okay, to push on. And when you push it on, you just pull the tape off and leave the adapter in place and pull the wheel and set the wheel to the side, all right? So you take your, your nut that goes on that shaft and your 13 16 wrench and wrench the wrench this part the, the grant adapter wrench it all the way down okay take the nut back off and then just put your wheel in place and if you ever need to take this off you can get a uh, you can get a puller from the parts store the, the three hook puller it hooks around the backside and it'll, it'll pull right off so that is about all the information I think I can give you um, pretty defined you don't you won't find you won't find rounded edges in the valleys um, all my edges are nice and crisp. You'll find that they're all on a 45 degree angle. Nothing's rounded out and washed out on the on this gull wing. Um, let's see. I guess that's about all I can think to tell you about it. So this is it. This is the season one two gull wing, and this is the information video on it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, you didn't have to see my ugly mug in this video too much. Thanks.